And I'm delighted to say that we can talk to Mike Summers, the Chief Executive of Palace for Life from Selhurst Park right now. Thanks for joining us, Mike. You're inside Selhurst Park and guessing it's eerily quiet there at the moment. It is, Vicky. Thanks for having me. It's eerily quiet and it's very windy and blowy. There's just a few pigeons out there on the pitch pecking away at, at some of the grass seed. But other than that, it's very, very quiet. Yeah, I can imagine. It's very strange. Look, Mike, on a normal day, you'd be out and about in schools and meeting young people. And I guess there'd be a hubbub going on inside Selhurst Park at the moment. There would. And in normal times, we're out in the community delivering football and other sports for young people across schools, out in the community, uh, disability groups, women and girls groups and so on. And of course, two months ago when the lockdown happened, all of that came to a shuddering halt. Um, luckily, we're still in some primary schools, so we're in seven local primary schools that are staying open for the children of key workers. So that's good, but most of our delivery, as we used to know it, has, has come to a halt. OK, so what have you done to combat that impact? So um, luckily, we've got a very innovative team of, of staff, and they've come up with a number of ideas. I mean, one of our um, great programmes we've launched recently is called Palace Pad Chat. And that's where we're using gaming platforms, so PlayStation 4 and Xbox, um, for some of our mentors who would normally be working with young people on a one-to-one -one mentoring basis, um, normally coming in here to the stadium, meeting them face-to-face, -face, but obviously can't do that now. So instead, they are playing FIFA or Fortnite mm. online and using that as an opportunity to hold conversations with young people, find out how they're doing, hear about their issues and their anxieties. And that's been a really good way of keeping in touch with some of the young people. Yeah. around the local area. How effective has it been and what have you been finding out from these young people? Okay, it's, it's very mixed, Vicky. So um, I think some young people just love the fact that they can stay at home all day and play on their PlayStations. But for every one of them, there's a, a large number who are really struggling. So there's anxiety, they're stuck at home, they're not seeing their friends. Um, some of them are living in quite cramped accommodation, they're not being able to get out, their families are having difficult times. So there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of worries around the mental health of, of some of our local young people. But it, it's great that we're able to still engage on that basis and listen to them and be a shoulder to, to cry on, be a mentor to give them some advice. Yeah, it's really positive stuff you're doing there. Look, how difficult was that to set up then? So um, it was set up by three colleagues of mine, Jamie, George and Roxanne, and mm. they are experts at playing PlayStation 4, which, which I must admit I'm not. <laughs> um, and they are in regular contact with young people going through our, our mentoring programmes. So, yeah, they set it up in a couple of days. They had the idea, set it up, and now it's being replicated across a lot of clubs, uh, across the Premier League and the EFL. So we're proud of it as an idea that started here at Selhurst Park and has now uh, disseminated more broadly across the, the wider world of football. Yeah, sounds great stuff. Look, what else have you been up to as well? Tell me more about it. You've got Palace Kitchen and the Super Draw. So Palace Kitchen, it was the brainchild of Tom Walker, one of the Palace shareholders, who approached Steve Parrish with the idea of saying, look, you've got fantastic catering facilities. So on a normal match day here at Selhurst Park, uh, obviously the, the club chefs are preparing food for hospitality guests. Uh, but Tom went to Steve Parrish and said, why don't we uh, raise a load of money through the shareholders and through the fan base and prepare meals. So now the club chefs, every week, three times a week, they're preparing over 1,500 meals. And with um, the partnership we have with City Harvest, who are a charity that distributes food across the local community, we're taking that food and we're distributing it through to homeless people, to the elderly and vulnerable, uh, to NHS key workers. As you know, Vicky, NHS workers are working harder than ever. They don't have time to go shopping. They don't have time to prepare food, but also to vulnerable families. So even at the best of times, families are struggling to, to put good, nutritious food on the table. But now things are even tougher. So families are worrying about where the next money is coming from, where the next food is coming from. So if our chefs here can use their skills for um, the support of the community, and that's fantastic news. And it's also keeping them, I guess, going as well, because I, I understand that you've had to have some of your staff have had to be furloughed. Um, indeed. So some of the foundation staff had to be furloughed, the ones that have, literally haven't been able to deliver. But wherever possible, and Steve Parrish has been a big driver in this, we've, we've kept staff on. So yes, for our chefs who are at home twiddling their thumbs, desperate to get out and do something, they've been actually really, really delighted to be able to come out and, and prepare food 
um, day in day out for the local community and then our fan base has really come to the fore here so we run a regular super draw that, that back in what used to be normal times, I don't know if we can call it normal anymore, mm -hmm. um, they would do a draw here at Selhurst Park, but now that's all gone online. So where, wherever we've had a, a match day, so we were meant to have played Man United, Man United last week, um, instead of doing the draw in the ground, we've done it online. And fans have been raising money for the Palace Kitchen to provide more, more meals but also providing um, money for local charities like the local food bank, Croydon NHS and other charities. So the fan base, always a, a very, very generous fan base, Crystal Palace, have been coming to the fore to help the local community. Yeah, it's a lovely circle you've got going, isn't it? You're helping the community and the community is helping you. Look, you talk about the vulnerable. We all know that Roy Hodgson himself is in a vulnerable group and is having to self-isolate at the moment. Um, look, you've contacted, I understand, all of your season ticket holders over the age of 70. How did you do that and, and what did you say to them? What have you said to them? OK, so um, we, I think in our, our database, if you like, we've got over 1,200 um, Palace fans over the age of 70 so the club brought together staff from across the club and the foundation I think 50 staff in total got in involved just making phone calls and in many cases just for a chat or a reminisce about Palace from, from days gone by but in some cases have unearthed some, some quite serious situations with, with elderly fans really struggling to, to go out and get their medicines or do their shopping. So staff from across the foundation and the club have really kind of embraced this and, and gone out, contacted people, still in touch with them on a regular basis and that's gone down extremely well and, and some of Palace legends, so Bright Dougie Friedman and others have themselves picked up the phone uh, to some of the Palace fans and, and made contact and that's that's made a lot of people's day at a time where a lot of people are very anxious and, and very lonely so we're delighted with that. Yes I can imagine that will have made some people's day. Look going forward do you foresee any problems you know uh, is this something that you foresee happening in your community you know getting uh, in touch with your c people that need your help via their consoles do you see this going forward do you see a light at the end of the tunnel here? I think the light at the end of the tunnel is we are all glued to the government announcements mm. and um, looking at what's going to come out this evening in the Q&A, etc. Uh, to see when we can get out and start delivering football out in the community again. So um, we are desperate to do that. There are lots of young people out in the community who, who are surely dying to come out and, and kick a football around. It might be when we go back that football might not be the first thing we can do because of social mm. distancing but we may be looking at doing other sports, maybe multi-sport activity camps. And we have people across the foundation looking at what a new socially distanced football session might look like. So there's some, some great brains around the club and around football in general, looking at how community football might look when we're able to get out there and work with young people again. So we're really looking forward to doing that. Just finally, Mike, going on what you've experienced and who you've spoken to, what do you think getting football back on will mean to the community surrounding Crystal Palace? So uh, Palace fans are, are desperate, I think, to see football back on the TV. Um, we're all keeping our fingers crossed. Steve Parrish himself has been a, a massive advocate of, of getting the the Premier League back up and running obviously it has to depend on it being done safely for the benefit of the the players the staff the supporters obviously it can't be at the detriment of the healthcare service or taking tests away from frontline workers but if Premier League football came back it would be such a a boost to all fans right across the country and, and beyond so fingers crossed Vicky that, that that happens as soon as it possibly can. Well keep doing what you're doing thank you very much for joining us Mike Summers.